What's that? A dollar bill. A dollar bill. How about that? Hey, Gad, I think you're right. Oh, you calamitous little piece of green paper here. And look, nowhere on it. Better say it lost kindly return too and all that. <laughs> you see? Anybody can earn a living. It doesn't take any imagination. But to get along without earning a living. That is a challenge to a man's wits. I never thought about it that way. Well, think about it, will you? Uh, excuse me, madam, but would a lily make the lady smile? <laughs> well, I've never heard of anybody scowling at a lily. I think I'll write a chapter about you in my book, The Lady Lily Scowler. When will your book be finished, Mr. Logan? What? When will your book be finished? Oh, not for a long, long time. Not till I am. And I may live forever, you know. How long are you going to stay at our house? Well, until the wind changes. Hey, what time is dinner? Uh, seven on Saturday. Good. That gives us lots of time. To do what? Well, to do anything. We can skim rocks. We can jump fences. We can fly kites. We don't have a kite. Well, we sure do. I carry all kinds of important things around with me in here, you know. Now, what does that look like? Kite's a very important thing. You'll have to admit that. Are you ready? For what? I'll race you to the fence. Hi! <laughs> Here, let's see what this does for you. Ah, uh, well, only one trouble. What's that? When the contributors of the Sam Logan Fund see this, they'll think I want a sweepstakes, and they'll cut me off without a dime. <laughs> no, 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 I'll take my chance. <laughs> Thank you, my old friend. Well, I'm only glad I had it to give. I wish the shoes hadn't been too small. Yes, that uh, was a shame. What's the Sam Logan Fund? Steve, one of my favorite charities, to which your father throughout the years has been a very frequent and Generous contributor. Amazing the power of that old school tie, Steve. However, at the moment, due to some careless stroller in the park, I happen to be independently wealthy. Uh -huh. <laughs> to careless strollers. To beauty. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, Glenn, I must say, though, if one is going to have possessions, these are certainly comfortable ones to have. I'm glad you approve. Approve? Oh, indeed. Of course, I wouldn't want them for myself, mind you. I'd prefer my freedom. Freedom to do what? Well, freedom to write my book, The History of America as Told to Sam Logan by Her People. Well, that sure is a weird title. I'm glad you brought that up, Steve. I welcome any opportunity to explain it. You see, I happen to have a theory. I believe that there's more history in what people, all kinds of people say to each other than in all the battles put together. Interesting theory, don't you think? Yeah. Well, anyway, so for the last 15 years, I've been traveling about the country and getting conversations wherever I go, and I put them down on my book. 15 years? I imagine that's quite a lot of conversations. Yes, indeed. Well, it must be a bulky manuscript. Well, I tell you, it's about half the size of the Bible so far. <laughs> wow. Uh, traveling around as much as you do, uh, where do you keep it? Oh. Oh, there's a, a sculptor in the village. He's got some of the first chapters stored in his studio. And, of course, the current ones I keep right here with me. I'd be very interested to read some of them. Oh, well, maybe some other time. I'm, I'm really not quite satisfied with it yet. Sam, I know a publisher if you'd like to meet him. Ah, uh, you just never will understand me, will you, old friend? I don't care about publishers or lawyers or contracts or royalties or autographs, Sonny. I just don't care about them. You and I hear different drummers, you know that? What do you mean, different drummers? If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it's because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, whether measured or far away. Henry David Thoreau. Mr. Logan, if you don't want to meet a publisher, why do you bother writing the book? Well, now, that's a good question, Katie. You know, I'm just like anybody else. I. I want to leave something behind me that, that says that I was here, something meaningful. That's all. That kind of makes sense to me, Katie. I think we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. It's time for you to go to bed. Oh, already? It's already past your bedtime. Oh, okay. Night, Dad. Mr. Logan. Good night, Steve. Sleep well. Steve! Listen, isn't the circus coming to town tomorrow? Why don't we go uh, down and watch them set up? 
Boy, that would be great. All right, we'll do it then. Gee, thanks a lot, Mr. Logan. Good night. digestion to eat and work at the same time. Well, it's awfully good for getting the work done. Why don't you stop work for today and take Stephen to the circus? He should go with his father. Oh, I just can't today, Katie. Uh, I'll have to make it up to him another time. Another time. Famous last words. You say them too often these days. Mm. So long, Dad. Katie. Oh, goodbye, Steve. I'm sorry I couldn't make it today. Yeah, me too. Um. Hey, Dad. Yeah, yeah, Steve, there's something on your mind? Well, I know this may sound goofy, but... Well, are you happy? <laughs> well, uh, yes, most of the time. Well, Mr. Logan's happy all of the time, he says. He says. Steve, I don't think it's possible for anyone to be happy all the time. Even if he were, he wouldn't know what happy was. You need a certain amount of sadness to know what happiness really is. Well, Mr. Logan says that you should really live each day because... Well, it's never coming this way again. Take today, for instance. Now, you have to grind away here at your desk, and Mr. Logan's going to the circus. Yes, that's very true. But did it ever occur to you that I might get more satisfaction out of, say, uh, working on my bill? Dad, I think we hear different drummers, you and I. I mean, well, I've been thinking a lot about my future lately, and... Well, I don't want to be loaded down with responsibilities the way you are. I want to be free like Mr. Logan. Well, I wasn't aware, Steve, that we'd been loading you down with responsibilities. Um, well, stuff like homework every night and having to get to school at 9 o'clock every single morning of your life. Well, where's the high adventure in that? Uh, what do you mean exactly by high adventure? Well, the kind of stuff Mr. Logan does. The places he goes and, and the people he meets. There's always something new. He never knows what he's going to do tomorrow the way you do. Or if he's going to eat tomorrow the way you do. Yeah, but, but something always turns up. And I agree with Mr. Logan. It, it takes courage not to run with the herd. May I remind you, Stephen, it takes courage to lead the herd the way your father does. And, but what for, when, when life can be so much easier Mr. Logan's way? Are you ready? Ready. Don't work too hard. Why not? <laughs> Why not, please? <laughs> Nobody has to. Come on. Bye. Have a good time. Imagine wanting to be like Mr. Logan when his own father set such a fine example. Oh, that's a very nice compliment indeed, Katie. Thank you. What are we going to do about Stephen? Why don't we just let him have his head for a couple of days? Give him the freedom to uh, do as he pleases when he pleases. Suppose he pleases not to go to school. He might learn something more important than a couple of missed lessons. I think he'd find out very quickly that it's actually hard work to do nothing. You have a point. And he might learn that responsibilities are not always necessarily burdens, that they are what, in effect, gives life its meaning. Would be a good lesson for a young boy to learn. I could always help him catch up when the experiment was over. Right. But... If it turns out to be a mistake, I'm going to blame it all on you. Well, of course. You wouldn't be a woman if you didn't. In that case, I'm very definitely a woman. In any case, you are very definitely a woman. Hi, Katie. Oh, Stephen, your breakfast will be ready in a minute. I think I'll have baked beans. <laughs> breakfast? Mm -hmm. Do we have a can of them? I think there's some in the cupboard. No baked beans are Mr. Logan's favorite food. You want me to heat them for you? Oh, no thanks. <laughs> There's your bus, Danny. It sure seems funny going to school with Dusty, Steve. Oh, you'll get used to it. In time. <laughs> Baked beans for breakfast? <laughs> Yuck! Daddy, the school bus. So 
Come, Danny, have a good day. Okay. Bye, Dad. Bye, Bye Katie. Danny's a nice boy. Young, but a nice boy. <laughs> you think that's enough ketchup? Oh, Mr. Logan says lots of ketchup. That's the secret of good cold baked beans. Mmm. <laughs> That's neat, man. He wants haste. No, thank you, Miss Jane. Oh, uh, well, how do you uh, plan on spending the first day of your new life? Oh, I don't know. Part of the way that Mr. Logan and I live is we don't make plans. Oh. We just kind of do things on the spur of the moment. Mm, I see. Oh, uh, by the way, Dad, before you leave for the office, how about a, a little contribution? To the Steve Morley Fund. What your allowance? Oh. Well, I, I don't know. It uh, just sort of went. But if you want extra money, why don't you mow a lawn or something? You don't understand, Katie. I'm, I'm through with all those worldly things. <laughs> just anything you can spare will be all right. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Dan. No, you may turn out to be one of my best contributors. <laughs> as you please for three days now. I imagine you're beginning to miss school. Who, me? Miss school? Who no, are you? Heck no. <laughs> I understand that your team is expected to win the intramural basketball tournament this week. Swell. <laughs> I wonder how Jeff Barkley got that black eye. I said, I wonder how Jeff Barkley got that black eye. I guess somebody must have socked him. Oh, Stephen, don't you care about anything anymore? Katie, I think you just don't understand. I'm not interested in things like that now. Well, what are you interested in? I'm just interested in enjoying my freedom. a dip at Walden Pond, very refreshing. You're a great admirer of Thoreau's, aren't you? Oh, you might say ardent. He didn't believe in making money either. I think you misinterpret him. Thoreau simplified his life so that he would need as little as possible. But what he needed, he worked for. He did not rely on the generosity of his friends. Whereas I do. Whereas you do. Well, you might be right, Kate, but I am giving them something for their money. They are making possible my book. Forgive me, Mr. Logan. I'm not even convinced that there is a book. Then you're wrong. That would be very simple to prove. Just show me some of the chapters. What difference does this make to you? Or are you planning on becoming one of my contributors? The difference it makes to me is Stephen. He wants to be just like you. And I don't think he knows who you are. And you do, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think you're a man who's not as happy as he says he is. You're often very lonely. You have no place to call home and no one that belongs to you and no son like Stephen to follow in your footsteps. Yeah. Uh, Katie, even if part of what you say is true, you have to remember that I do live this life by choice. I think you live it because a long time ago you got scared. Scared? That you were not as brilliant as they said you were. So you decided not to try at all, and you can't fail if you don't try. Excuse me. Do you have a license to practice psychiatry at this state? Not psychiatry, Mr. Logan. 
but I do have a license to protect our son from harmful philosophy. Now, please stop influencing Stephen. And how do you propose that I do that? Take off your mask. I don't have a mask, Katie. I'm exactly what I seem. Well, if there is a book, then show me the chapters. <sighs> Katie, that book is none of your business. And I don't have to prove anything to you. I thought you'd say that. And besides, I think you exaggerate my influence on young Steve. But however, since you're convinced that poor old Sam Walden is the cause of all this hullabaloo, then I can see it's time for him to move on to his next adventure. The wind has changed, and I'll move out in the morning. But where will you go? Wherever the wind blows, Stevie. I'm coming with you. Now, Stephen. My mind's made up, Katie. I know the kind of life I want. You mean you want to leave your home and your family? Well, not exactly leave. I mean, I'll come back and visit a lot, all the time. Besides, now that you and Dad are married, I don't suppose you'll really miss me that much. Oh, Stephen, how can you say such a thing? We love you more than anything in the world. Well, I love you too, Katie, but... Well, I've got a lot of learning to do, and, and I think Mr. Logan can teach me. I'll pack a few things. Now, do you think I exaggerate your influence? No, I guess not. You realize, of course, we can make him stay. The problem is to make him want to stay. After you walk out that door, we don't want him to feel that he missed the chance of a lifetime. Are you that sure that he won't have? I am that sure. ready, Mr. Logan. Look, I don't think it's a good idea you're coming with me. Why not? Well, I'd be responsible for you. And, you know, I, I don't, don't like responsibilities. You know, my whole life is based on that. But I wouldn't be a responsibility to you, Mr. Logan. I, I promise. You can't promise a thing like that, Steve. I don't think it'd be a good idea. But I could be a big help to you. I could help you with your book. Listen to people and take notes and... Do you want to see what there is of that book? Why, I sure would. Open it. Go ahead. It's not here. Well, it's just between you and me. It isn't anywhere. What? There's no history of America as told to Sam Logan by her people. Well, then why do you say there is? Well, because it doesn't make me seem like another moocher. Now, listen, I want you to keep this information to yourself. Okay. Now, you can imagine what would happen to the Sam Logan Fund if the truth came out. Yeah, I guess so. You know, Steve, people are funny. They, they think you're a bum unless you're doing something. Yeah. Well, uh, there really is no book, huh? Well, you look. Did you see it? No. Well, I'd better be going. You understand about my not wanting responsibilities. Yeah, sure. I mean, me too. I sure wouldn't want any responsibilities. You want the kite? Well, don't you want it? Sure I want it. But I can get another one. Thanks. Well, see? So long. So long, Mr. Logan. I thank you for the coat, and most of all, I thank you for your friendship. 
You're welcome on all counts. By the way, how's the Sam Logan fun coming along? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. It's a little sick. <laughs> he, he always was one of my most generous contributors. <laughs> well, my friends, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Logan. Till we meet again. Bye-bye. Bye, Sam. Strange guy. Yeah. And the funny part of it is, that book of his really is good. You mean there really is a book? Oh, well, sure. I've read lots of the chapters. Well, the other is for skrecklig. He saw anything else or didn't best have it. Oh, now what have I done? And what does all that mean? <laughs> I goofed. <laughs>